Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm, we're going to be making this beautiful looking grass I've been working on for a while. To be honest, actually, I've only been working on it for two days. Anyway, before we start the video, uh, thank you for uh, David Robinson for his support on Patreon. It really helps. If you want to support me on Patreon, link is in the description. You get a bunch of goodies from there. Also, uh, join our Discord. It has 31 members that we always chat and hang out. And uh, I can help you guys with some coding stuff there as well. Um, and finally subscribe if you if you like the video anyway let's get into the video so in unity i've just got a really basic setup here i've just got a main camera a light a uh, volume a terrain and a cube if you didn't realize i am in hdrp as you can tell from the oh my god those clouds are actually really cool <laughs> i haven't actually looked at them um, but the, this is the grass we're gonna make. Uh, I've made all the shader and stuff I just have to show it off, but uh, I'll, I'll just show you what I've got set up So I've got a camera pointing down at my grass a directional light that has the Sun pointing this way uh, Like this let me just reset the position And now I've got a volume uh, that contains all my data my shadows ambient occlusion bloom visual environment uh, exposure and sky and that all that sort uh, and then I've just got a really small terrain here, which I've painted the uh, grass details on. And then I've just got a cube here, which is just sitting in the grass. Um, anyway, so also I am using the standard uh, Unity grass assets that come when the standard assets in Unity from uh, ages ago. I actually don't know why I have it on my computer, but I found it and I'm using it. Um, and I've also just got a little bit of, like some... Uh, terrain from textures.com uh, so a terrain texture which is like a forest ground texture and then I've just created a shader here uh, which just contains a few of the uh, variables I'll go over everything what they do after I go into the grass shader and explain it all okay so honestly easier than the water shader that I made the other, the, uh, not the other day, Jesus, two months ago. Um, but I'll go over everything right now. Okay, so I'll go over the color first, because this is the easiest part. So essentially, our color spread, um, is, so our color spread is controlling our color variant and how much it spreads. So if we go actually into our scene view, and we go here, and we change our color spread, as you can see, it it's kind of uh, changing how much it spreads. So if you, I'd probably keep it about like there. And then obviously the uh, color variant is the color difference between the plants. I probably wouldn't recommend keeping it super vibrant, but I'd probably go about there. Anyway, so in here, uh, by the way, I've hooked this into a divide node. Otherwise, to make it more sense that, you know, the higher the number, the more spread out it would be. Because otherwise, you kind of have to do the lower the number, the more spread out, and it, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. You'll see, you'll see me do this in a few other areas in this shader. I uh, just wanted to point that out. Uh, next, I'm just splitting in objects position. So I'll go over what I actually came up with, why I, why I'm doing this, rather than just plugging the position straight into offset nodes. So, um. For the UV of this noise node, which we're plugging in, so this is the uh, kind of second variant. Uh, this is de deciding what color the grass is going to be. So uh, I'm creating a vector, which I'm going to plug in as the UV from a gradient noise. So usually, if we were grabbing the position of the object, because uh, we need to make the UVs based on what where the object is for the you know the color of the grass. So, uh, if we just plugging the position straight in there, then because this is a vector 2, it's taking in two values instead of three. Uh, so if we think of the split node as X, Y, and Z as RGB, it'll only take R, R and G, which the problem is, is that there's X as R and Y as G, meaning that Y, uh, is vertical, not horizontal, not horizontal on the Z direction. So therefore, I'm just pretty much changing the Y in the vector 2 to Z, uh, essentially remap remapping it. Uh, so we're sending that into gradient noise, and we're plugging this into the lab, into the time node, uh, time little thing of the node. Um, and what that's doing is it's 
going between the, our albedo map and multiplying by our color variant. That's why the texture is plugged in. So this is essentially color ramping it. If you if you know Blender nodes, it's color ramping it uh, and changing the color into the color variant. And then we're plugging this into the second part of the lerp, and that's just going straight into the base color. And then I've also uh, split out the alpha from the texture map and I've just put it through these. Uh, you can make these by the way by just double clicking. It's really helpful to split up the nodes and make them uh, go in like a path that you want. But I've just split up the alpha and brought it into the alpha. Also note that you do need alpha clip threshold enabled. You can find that under surface and then under alpha clipping there. Now we're on to the real... Uh, mind screw <laughs> of this whole thing so oh yeah also uh our al albedo map is a texture 2d up here same as our color spread that is a uh, float and then we've got color variant which is a color if you haven't realized cool where do i start okay at the s we'll start at the end so first of all these two things here are controlling how hard and uh how the wind blows so we're actually using a time node so over time it's going to change the offset of gradient noises and i've done uh two, two one for x one for z meaning that we can have multi-directional grass wind uh so as you can see under wind strength here i've got it as a vec two so you, if we change this to something like 10 uh you know the x is going to be blowing much harder than the y so if you think of the y as z and the x as x then we can uh, say that the x is moving faster than the z so we have more of like a diagonal pattern more towards x uh, so we're plugging that straight into a tiling and offset and sending that as the offset node uh, because further down the track it's going to be here also we're adding the object's position we're adding that we're splitting it and then we're grabbing the x and y so up here if if this is setting the x and y which you think of y is z here um so it's splitting it and it's putting it into the offset node offset into add add split so we're kind of splitting we're splitting a add of a vector so think of this as a vector 2 adding our position in our x and z and our uh this is also a little part here so we're adding our x and z x and z um adding them to create a vector 2 which is the position that we want to offset and then we're splitting it into more tiling and offsets into gradient noise and then here we're dividing by our wind speed let me just put the wind strength back and here's another uh one of these that i did that i have divided wind spread by divides so then obviously the more it would be more spread out the the more scale you would have um awesome and i've plugged these into a multiply node where we can increase the wind size which is essentially how hard it blows so uh if you think about wind in real life you know it had very varying degrees of blowiness kind of so if uh you know grass would be pushed all the way over rather than just a small breeze which would just kind of push at it and also because we're doing going by position with this we'll get a nice kind of wave effect with our grass now this is where it's all kind of getting brought together so uh grabbing each of these each of the gradient noises and we're plugging them um again x and z not x and y we're plugging the top one because we've taken the x up here into the gradient noise we're plugging this into a vector three as the x and the gradient noise here we're plugging it into a multiply node with the one size and then we're plugging this into the z as the z change so now we are lerping between the position of the grass normally um, as the first one and then the second one is this vector 3 up here that we're also adding the position to so it's this is the difference in position here um, and we're adding then putting into the B port and for the T port we are simply uh, grabbing the position of the grass. Cool, I realize that last part literally doesn't work at all, I don't think. But you know what? I don't care. Okay, 
I am tired, it's 11 o'clock, and I need a video out, <laughs> because I told people on my Discord. Anyway, so let's go over all the, um, kind of variables in the inspector and how they work. Okay, so here you can see the grass is moving, and what I'm first of all going to say is that uh, I've also added a smoothness here. I actually forgot to show that in the graph. Um, it's really easy, you just plug in a float into the smoothness. Um, but here, if I change the color spread, it's going to change the color spread. Wind strength, this is how fast it's blowing. So as you can see, the more I do it, the harder it blows. That's what she said. Sorry, I had to. Um... Uh, wind spread, this is how, how much it actually blows, and it's kind of like this, like, you know, when you said it's like 27, it's like barely, so I like going like someone like 3, gives a little bit more movement, maybe 5, and then wind size is, um, <laughs> how much it moves. Uh, you can get pretty nutty with this. <laughs> or you can get, or you can make it go like way down. Oh, that's right, um, no, I know what this was, I have split, so, the lerp node here, sorry, it's just come back to me, the lerp node here, uh, for the time, I've put it from the position into a split node, um, and I'm grabbing the Y position, so then the bottom doesn't move, but the top does, so the higher that the grass is, the more it'll move, which makes sense in real life, because the taller grass is, obviously, the more, uh, influence is going to get by wind because it's more taller it's more heavy uh it can i guess you could say contract more force um anyway guys hope you enjoy this video and i'll see you guys later